All right, uh, I'm going to start another session, and today I'm going to do something I've been kind of putting off for a while, which is to actually build a you know, actual reinforcement learning bot. And I was thinking about this more, and one of the reasons I was hesitant to do this was that, um, you know, one of the most, you know, many of you probably know about Alpha Zero and, and Leela Chess Zero, which sort of mimics Alpha Zero. Um, and so one of the things that make these makes these bots so powerful is that they, um, they threw everything out, right? You don't, they didn't, they didn't think about material advantage as sort of a surrogate for winning. They just said, here's how I win, right? Let's just, let's just win. We don't care about material. Um, let's just learn. And we don't know about the rules. We don't know about, about, you know, strategy. We don't know about the center control. Uh, we don't know about development leads. Like we don't know about, you know, king safety. All you know is win, you know, make the moves that make you win. Um, and, What's so challenging about this is that, you know, in reinforcement learning, the the major challenge is when you reward an algorithm for stuff that it did many, many moves ago, right? So that's this is what happens in chess, right? Eventually you get a checkmate or you are checkmated and you either get a good reward or a bad reward. Um, and 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 the thing the thing is the reason for that checkmate didn't really happen in the most recent moves. It happened earlier on when at some point you hung a piece or or you you fell for a tactic or something, right? And and this is you know what's different about Alpha Zero and Leela is that older engines used to just just use something like material balance, material um, advantage, material ratios um, as like a you know, surrogate goal. And in fact, our engine that we were building, the Minimax engine that we were building with alpha beta pruning or Negamax pruning as we had implemented it, um, it was, uh, sorry, it was, it's not called Negamax pruning, pruning. It's still alpha beta pruning, but it was using the, the, Neg the Negamax objective. Um, anyway, what we were building was a material-based material, material -based engine. And what what I was worried about is that, you know, if we, if we build a, a reinforcement learning bot that tries to uh, just improve the material advantage, it'll be rewarded for, for material, but then it won't look ahead. It will be like short-sighted. Um, and that's what I was worried about. But the reason, okay, so it turns out that shouldn't be something to worry about because that's the very reason reinforcement learning um, was invented. Is, is that, you know, I'm, I'm sort of, what I was concerned about is that the bot would learn to take a bunch of material um, but then lose it back, lose it later on, because they didn't realize it was, you know, uh, much like our initial bot that just considered the material score as the only reason for it to make a move, um, it would sort of like capture a pawn, uh, not realizing that it was trading a queen for that pawn. Um, and that's exactly what reinforcement learning is good at, right? Reinforcement learning is good at saying, well, you made this move at this stage, but then what about the future? What what's what's the future reward you're going to get, or or the future penalty you're going to get? So, with that in mind, I want to then just try to do uh, the one form of reinforcement learning that I know well, which is uh, Q learning. Um, and so, what is Q learning? Well, I don't want to teach it right now. I just want to build it. So, but just in general, it's um it's it's a it's a method that combines temporal difference learning and this idea of trying to learn the value of each move from each position or each stat, uh, state. In, in reinforcement learning, we call it states. And um, yeah, we're gonna try to build it. It's gonna be a little tricky uh, trying to do it from you know from memory. I, I don't, I haven't like brushed up on it too too much. I thought about it a little bit offline, but. Um, yeah, I, I can write down the update. But anyway, so uh, what we will do is we'll set up. We need to set up a reward function and a and then a Q function. And so the, the Q function is this action uh, action state function, which I think our Q function is just going to be. So here's, here's the what we're going to do. The Q function is just, just going to be scoring the next position. Um, using you know using the weights and features that we had set up and and right now with the features being just the material advantage uh it's not going to work very well but it'll it'll do better than what we were doing doing before right which was this fake reinforcement learning classification framework i had set up so we'll do something a little bit better than that but uh let's see so let me go to our sharing screen mode 
Okay, so uh, this is our code uh, for generating features. So that won't change. I guess. I guess I'm going to refactor this a little bit, and I'm going to keep this. I, I made one small change here. You can see that this is highlighted because uh, I changed it since the last commit. Um, I just made this a little bit more numerically stable. So when you do this trick where you're uh, exponentiating something to um, when you're exponentiating some scores and then normalizing them you can just subtract a constant any constant from that because that constant gets absorbed here and so this will make this more stable but okay um, I want to keep this as it is uh, it's it can be tweaked it can be improved um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to keep that as is. So, so now the scores, I think I'm just going to make just for just for um, encapsulation. I'm going to change this to, to let's see, scores. Oops, scores i equals. We're going to call this um, self dot. Call it action score, and we'll give it the board and the move. And then this is going to be moved into something called action score. So this is the Q function. I don't like calling it the Q function because it's just jargon. And nowadays Q means something else. <laughs> but but uh, regardless of what it means in in internet culture, uh, Q, uh, the, the original name, Q, you know, Q, the Q function is, is it's a state action score. Um, I'm calling it an action score for short. Uh, I, I don't, I don't think it's um, uh, shoot. What's, sorry, uh, I, I don't, I don't want to. Yeah, I, I, I like it. The name to have some meaning as much as possible. Uh, what am I doing? I want to return the score. Okay. So this is the score for making a move from the particular board position. And that's good, I think. Then we have to generate the reward. Um, I'm trying to think, should the reward be part of... I don't think the reward should be out here. The reward should be... Hmm. Yeah, let me let me do some let me write down some notes here. So I'll I kind of want to clear this, but I don't. I I, I guess I want to do okay. So so this is this this is the loop to play game after it plays the game. So let me just let me just annotate this so that I I have, can keep it organized. So play a single game and then do learning on all steps of the game and. Outcome, outcome error. I don't know if I want to keep this structure where I had this like if statement where it's switching between wins, losses, and draws because there's just a lot of repeat code here. I don't think I actually need that for a Q learning. So I'm going to be aggressive and just sort of chop this away. Yeah, right. It doesn't actually matter whether the game was a win, loss, or a draw. So we're just going to drop that. Um, learning rate, I'll leave there as a hard-coded parameter. When this clipping, I will... I'll leave that for now. I'm not going to enforce it to be, uh, the pawn to be one anymore. I think that's, I had wanted, I had wanted to get rid of that already. So now, now we print the weights and that's, that's okay. So last, last in the previous version and in, and in the current version for now, we, we just, the weights are for the, the values for every type of piece. And I guess I'm just going to leave it that way for now. Uh, eventually we'll do it so it's more complicated and then, and then printing this out will not make sense anymore. But so for now, here's the, here's where the learning goes. So, uh, so let me just, whoops, let me just mark this stuff. So we're going to do, I'm just marking everything. So this is a uh, print print diagnostic info uh, we're gonna do um, clip weights and I don't want it to be minimum zero anymore I guess I want minimum minus 25 so we'll never let it go 
outside of the 25 minus minus 25 to 25 bucks I mean that shouldn't be necessary now that I fixed that max thing but I think it's okay I think it's a good idea to keep it clipped for now this might be removable all right so then I'm gonna put the to do here so this is the do the learning stuff so um, so I'm, 20, I'm putting this all in, the, in a main function, which doesn't feel great. I kind of feel like this should go inside a learning class or something, but it's, it's okay for now. It's okay. So let's do, um, so we're just playing as the white, as the white, um, player and the black player is defaulted to this random player. Okay. So it's like defaulted to have certain weights. And for now, that's the challenge. The challenge is just to, just to outplay a bot that randomly makes moves that try to improve the material advantage. Um, so let's do let's loop through all the all the white's positions, and then we'll think about the the, the Q learning update. So let's say well, to do that, we need to know about the current position, the move that was made, which is not saved. We have to save the move that we made. So we have to go to, uh, we have to make a, I don't know that I need black positions. I'm just going to really simplify and make it just one, one player is going to learn. So, so white moves equals that black positions. Depend. So yeah, we don't want the black positions anymore. And in fact, we have to be careful about what positions we're looking at. Actually, what I want now is to save uh, save the white positions sorry save previously i had done something where oh shoot features board do i want the board i'm trying to avoid saving copies of the board but i might need to to think about this So another one option is to do do it this way, where I'm playing a full game and then running the update. Another another option is just to do to do the learning while it's playing, which is the more sort of traditional approach for TD uh, for Q learning and for TD temporal difference learning. And the, and the principle there is like you make a move, you see what happened, and based on what happened, you update your function. And it's kind of the same thing. Um, There's also there's also the idea that after the board outcome we need to run another update at the, at the very end based on who won. So how do I generalize this? I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to say the engine will have a So you have to call it Q learning. So, so let's call it Q learn. And it and to, to do Q learning, it needs to get a reward. The reward score. It has to get the move that it made previously. So let's call it prev move. And it needs a previous board position. Oh, it needs well. Let's let's do this in order. Prev board. Prev move new board. Okay, we have to think about this. So the, what's tricky is that we're not talking about making a single move. We're talking about making a move and then the opponent making a move. And after that, it, that's like the what we learn to to uh, aim for. We try to aim for a resulting better position after the opponent makes a response to our move. But what I'm, what I'm stuck on right now is that sometimes the opponent might not get to make another move. Like if you if you deliver checkmate, then this function call won't work because you can't give the next board position after you deliver checkmate because the game is over. So I 
I guess one good thing is this: we don't actually need the board, so we, so so we can actually keep the keep the features. No, 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 because I for the Q learning update. Let me just write it down from memory. So it's uh, the Q for action state gets. Let's see if I remember this. You get the reward that you received, and then you get so learning rate. So let's call it rate times let me write out the full words uh, reward okay and then we say so we look over the max over all the possible actions for Q A S Okay, the, this is not completely correct. I have to get the index indices right. So this is this is going to be. So the the trick here, well, no, this is completely wrong. I think it actually should be something like. Where's the learning rate go? I'm trying to do this from memory, so I don't have to look it up. Okay, so we, the the lot the 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 excellent the the interpretation of this is that you you have one term that's like an estimate of the. Actually, in general, Q, the, the definition of Q, let me just write, write this as notes also. Q A S is estimate of future reward after making move A from S. So you're in state S and you make an action A. So that's the estimate of the future reward, and then and so that's 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 this. It appears on the right, left hand side and the right hand side, and then the difference is that I, I guess this is maybe the learning rate's in the wrong place here. This is not here. Oh, I think this is supposed to be the discount rate. So it's so uh, make me move. Okay, so uh, I want to give you more space. So this, I believe, is the estimate. Q A S. Oh, I see. I see. You're the, uh, yes, we're supposed to. This is like going to be S prime, and then Q, this is going to be a different action. All right, sorry, I'm using like LaTeX style notation here, but anyway. Um, so what this means is that we need to know all the legal moves from the next position. Right? This S prime is the next position, so that's new board. So we'll get that. We get the previous board. I guess for the previous board, we don't actually need it. So we just we just need the features. Is that a good way to do this though? Complaining. Indent expected. Okay. Oh, I had to actually write code. Okay, let's put some real code here. So I think that the, what we need to do is. Well, yeah, this is still not completely correct. This should be. So it should look like this. So, so this is essentially like a loss function. Um, and and the idea is that if this number, this is our, this is our sort of like empirical measure of what the reward should have been, and this is our estimate from before. And if it's greater than that, then we increase it. If it's less, then we, we decrease it. Okay. So I think this is correct. Um, you can also view this as a gradient for the loss, but for now it, it doesn't matter. All right, so that's what we want to implement, and I'll just I'll deal with the there's the checkmate scenario or the end of game scenario, which is going to be a little messed up, but 
I think that can be manageable because the idea is that there are no actions and so this will be just zero and you just get a large reward I think I don't know we'll figure it out let's okay I'll call it okay it's still called Q learning all right so let's just say so to do this right now now it's tricky because we actually have to take there's a small um, adjustment that needs to be made to the fact that we're taking the Q function is determined by determined by weights but I think that just means that we take this becomes the gradient no this is hold on let me try writing it out and see if it works then we can write, we can think of a way to test it so I guess we want self dot weights equals self dot weights I mean it should be plus equals plus equals and then self dot learning rate which doesn't exist yet let's say uh, let's not put that in self let's put it in the in the actual function call learning rate and we'll give this uh, learning rate let's give it one let's call it one let's make it point one point oh one point oh one whoops oh, shoot lost my place let's make it point oh one to start okay so learning rate and we're giving it uh, then we're multiplying it by the reward which we received plus let's name something future reward future score minus to think about this yeah the formula is not exactly the same when you're dealing with the weights so I think let's see how do we do this we need it to be it's right it's in my notes from my class that I taught or the classes I've taught on this but I just don't remember it off the top of my head it should be weights plus learning rate times and just think about this so it should be I think it's going to be Yeah, I have to look this up. I have to look at my notes. I can't remember for sure. All right, time to look at my own slides. Let's see if they're still online. This is the last time I taught this class. Okay. Do I have, do I have a link to slides? Slides. It would be in active reinforcement learning. These are all my all my old slides. I have a version of these these this lecture on on YouTube as well, which I can I can link to when I post this. This recording to YouTube. Okay, so this is the this is active. Oops, come on. Um, yeah, this is it. Oh shoot. Okay, let me open it in preview because Safari is giving me trouble. Okay, so we're looking for yeah. So this is the Q learning formula. This is what I just wrote. Did I get it right? I think I did. There's this gamma term that I'm going to drop. So one of the things is in Q learning, you have this uh, discount term, which is like how much you discount future rewards. But I actually want to set that to be one. 
in in this case because what I'm what I'm going what I want to reward is the change in material. And what that means is that if you add up all the change in material over the course of the game, what you end up with is the material that you have at the very end. So uh, maybe one is not maybe that's too ambitious. I was thinking because then then like then like you wouldn't be incentivized to take a piece that you're going to lose later. Right. So this, the, the scenario at the beginning that I talked about where you, you, you have a queen, you, you capture a pawn and then when the, 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 you know, someone you can recapture and you lose the queen. You don't want to incentivize that at all. So I kind of think that having no discount will work. But anyway, I'll, I'll, play, I'll program it, it in and leave it as, at one and then we can change it later. All right. So this is the formula I want. So this is approximate Q learning. We're using a, a weight function. And the formula looks like this, so I, I need to. So I have the re reward. I multiply by uh, this term is just going to be the score. Oh, I see. And so the whole thing is multiplied by the gradient for. Oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. So multiply the whole thing by the by the features. So previous features, I think. This is the features for. The current state. I think that should work. I think that should work. Okay, so this is going to be reward max future score minus, and then we're going to do prev features dot self dot weights. Let's, let's try to format this a little nicer, and all that times prev features. I think that should work. All right, so this is just a little bit too wide to fit on the screen, but it's it's actually within the range of the typical. I think it's like eighty characters is the range you want to have it in. But okay, um, so I haven't defined max max future squirrel score squirrel score. So max future score is going to be equal to let's call it zero, and then we're just going to iterate through all the moves. So moves equals New board dot board dot legal moves. Uh, you know I shouldn't do that. Let's just do for for move in new board dot legal moves, and we will get hmm. Yeah, the, 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 there's some indexing challenges here. So what what which position am I scoring? I'm scoring the position. You know what? I'm going to do something different. I'm just just because this I, this was a uh, oh wait. So I have a right. That's right. I remember now I have I wrote this action score function for a reason. So the action score function is going to take the previous board and apply the current move to it. So we're going to do that as well here. So in fact, this is going to be previous board. And I'm just going to have to store all the board positions. It'll, it'll be a little a little bit cumbersome memory wise, but it's not that bad. It's not like it's nothing nothing as expensive as like as like uh, minimax search, which has exponential growth. This is going to be linear in the size of the games. So okay, uh, with uh, max future score, I don't I guess I'll do I guess I will do um, score is equal to self dot action score. We get new board 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 move, and if score is greater than max future score, max future score equals score. All right, so this. This is like not a very Python way to do it, but it's a little bit. I actually don't know what happens if you take a max of an empty list in my in Python, and and so this this handles that. Like there could be no legal moves, and that would mean that you would just um you would just return zero here, which is fine, or not return. Max future score will retain the value of zero. Oh shoot! But zero could be. But the score could be better than zero, or it could be worse than zero. Okay, in that case, in that case, I actually. 
I actually need to... All right, let's do this the Python way then. We'll do it Python style. So let me just clear all this. So I'm going to say um, if map, it's so ugly, uh, moves equals new board dot legal moves. And I actually want to make this a list if len moves equals zero. So if, the, if it's an empty, then we're going to say max future score equals zero. And then else we're going to say max future. This is still not perfect Python style because I'm, I have an if I'm defining these inside if statements, which is a little bit ugly, but okay. Um, so we're going to say max of a, a list comprehension and that list comprehension is going to say be self dot action score new board and uh, move for move in moves. Okay, so this is the Python, you know, magic for like ru running this ascent, this loop. There's a complaint here. There's an outer scope move. I think I'm okay with that. I think that's in the main function. All right, so now now the max future score is defined, and so the learning. Okay, so now we multiply by the learning rate reward max future score. I think this should be discount and times the max future score minus now this instead of previous features we're not going to use that we're going to say we're going to say self dot action score previous board and previous move do i have a previous move yes good and then it's still running over the line previous features um I think I need to Oh, this is so ugly. Um I'm trying to decide what the what which which hack is uglier or less ugly. I have to I have to get the features that I use to calculate this, which means that I I, I guess I'm just going to hard code it here. So that's going to be the same procedure. So descriptor. In fact, maybe what I should do. No, I, you know what? This is the this is the thing I'm gonna do. So uh, yeah, it's fine. I'm I'm just gonna copy it. It's I was gonna make it a function, but we're never gonna use it again. I don't think so. Let's just call it this. Oh shoot, I lost, I lost my clipboard. I think I copied an empty space. Okay, copy that. You have to put it into, the, oh shoot, this is such a mess. So we're gonna do previous board, push and then previous move, and then previous board. And then we pop it. This is so risky. I mean, this is this is just this is like I, I knew, I'm doing this pushing and popping to avoid having to like have multiple copies of the same board. But this is risky because I have to just you know every time I do this I have to remember to do that. And if I don't do that, then I'm corrupting this the the position that's being stored in memory. But I don't know. It's fine. It's like C programming. It's like this is a I'm allocating stuff and this is freeing it. So, all right, we don't have a discount value, so let's add that. So I'm gonna say discount equals one for now. And I think we have everything we need. All right, so now the question is, what do we do? So we can do this for, mid for in the middle of the game, what you do is you look at, you, you calculate the reward, which we haven't done yet. You calculate, you give, give it the, I guess the reward would be the change in material balance from this board to this board. And this board is what is what the game looked like before our, our agent made a move. And this board is the next turn we have. So that's after the opponent makes a move. Um, this is the move that we, we chose to make. And nowhere here do we store the move the opponent makes. So we, we sort of just treat that as part of the environment. 
Um, but now that seems fine. Um, this is going to be a little, yeah, reward will be a little tricky to calculate, but not really. I, I'm going to copy the material material count that I had from the previous engine. Let's just bring it over. Well, do I want to copy it or do I want to just import it? I guess I can just import it for now. Let's just do that. From custom engine import material count. Okay. So we have a material count. I, I guess my, you know, what I was going to work through is the challenge is when the game ends before it even gets back to our turn again. Like it could end, it could end immediately right after the move. I guess. I guess material count doesn't do what it want then. Does it? And I don't think I, yeah, you know what? I don't like, I don't like this. The material count I had before was specifically for for minimax style search, so it was trying to score the position for the player who just moved, and I don't, I don't think we want that this time. I think we want it just to be the material count for whoever's turn it is. So actually, I'm gonna rewrite material count. So I'm gonna copy and change it. So our own material count. So it's going to be, the, we're going to count the material in the position for the player to move. We get all the pieces. Uh, we need the piece values dictionary, which I guess I can just copy. Uh, I feel so, I don't want to copy code, but I guess I'm doing that for now just to make it work. Okay. And this time if it's, okay, if the, if the piece is of the color of the, turn the player the board's turn then we're going to add the value and otherwise we'll subtract so this is just material count so we're not going to account for we will not account for um winning or losing and let me do let me write the learning stuff and then we'll deal with the outcome In fact, yeah, yeah, we'll deal with we'll deal with the end of the game later. The end of the game will need a little special hacking. So let's just say do uh, temp. Well, I want to call it temporal difference learning, but it's not exactly that. So, and I I want I'm just gonna call it Q learning. Do Q learning learning on each of White's moves. All right, so we're gonna look at, I think the best way to do this is to index the moves. It's not very Python style, but I don't know how else to do it because we have to look at the first, we have to look at the previous move in the, oh shoot. So we have white positions and white moves. I guess we're gonna do, Uh, let's see, so we don't want the last one. I think, I think this is correct. And we'll get the position. I think we can just do en white, uh, engine white dot learn, what do I call it, qlearn? Call it qlearn, and then it gets the reward value, which we haven't calculated yet. Um, and gets the previous board, which will be I lost the I lost the prototype. Previous board, previous move, new board. Oh, this is so cool! Um, I didn't know that PyCharm does this. It's showing me all the things I do with this object, so that it has to, we have to, we know what it has to support. Anyway, uh, but we got a you know it's a chessboard, so we were gonna. Yeah, see, this is now. I don't want to do dot features. Yeah, I, okay, that's right. I want to do a board dot copy. 
and white positions. Hold on. I'm not gonna save. Okay, I, I'm not gonna save that. I'm not gonna save this at all. We're only gonna save the white moves. And yeah, well, just, yeah, it'll, it'll be a little challenging to deal with the end game, or the not the end game, the end of the game. That'll be a little bit weird. But okay, so let's do. We're gonna get white positions. We'll get the ith entry there. That's the previous position, and then we'll get the white move there and I'm gonna now give it the new position which will be white positions I plus one plus one so it's the next board and then the learning rate and discount I'm gonna leave as is as the, at the def, as the defaults and now the main thing is to cal calculate the reward so the reward I'm going to say is going to be the difference between the board position the material counts for the for the two board positions in in uh, in question. So we just call material count. So it's just going to be material, whoops, equals material count. And then we say white positions. I, I kind of want to just rename these for the. I want to rename these for um, cleanliness, but it's fine. Yeah, actually I want this one. Okay, so what's happening here? So let's look at the whole thing. So the reward is gonna be the change in the material count, you know, how much material the material count in the future position differs from the previous one. So you get a good reward if you're getting a better material count after you make a move and, and then the opponent makes a move. In this case, black, right? If, if, if you as white or you if the engine as white makes a move black replies and you end up with a better material advantage after that you get a reward if you get a worse material advantage you get a penalty um that seems good and then and then and then the right the down then the last move is um final move or fun like okay so this is like we have to figure out what the reward is if outcome equals Outcome dot winner equals chess dot white. One annoying thing is that I'm training a bot to only ever play as white, but we'll deal with that later. If this works, we can probably just adjust it to make it so it can play as both sides. Um, so if it's white, then we're going to say reward. Oh, you know what? This this is not a good way to do it. So I'm going to say reward equals 100 if Outcome winner is white, else, L if, can I do it, can I do it this way? No. Um, winner equals none. Can I do that? No, I don't know how to do that. Uh, so let's just say, okay, let's go back to the other way. I, I don't know how to do a one-liner here because it's, it's ugly. Um, so let's just go back to the classical way of writing if statements. So reward is equal to 100, L if outcome winner equals the black player. Reward equals minus 100, else then if it's no winner, then I'm just gonna say reward equals zero. You know what, actually I want the reward to be I want the reward to nullify whatever material advantage there is. But I don't know how to do that. Let's just say zero, that's fine. So now for the last, okay. So now for the last piece, we're gonna say engine white dot Q learn. We give it the re new reward. We give it the last white position. So minus one is Python's hacky way of writing the final entry in a list. Um, the last move that we made, and then the final, the, like the follow-up position, I actually don't know what to do here. I, I wanna do like an empty board. I wonder if I can do that.
clear board. Hmm. Well, here I'll just do. I'll do it this way. I'll, I'll just make it. I'll make it. I don't know what the fen is for a um for an empty board. What's it look like? Uh, where's clear clear board? It looks like this. Okay, let's do that. It's a little bit of a hack, but. I guess my point is I just want to make sure I get a, give it a board that has no legal moves. But this is a, that's pretty ugly, but it, it might work. All right, so I've built a bunch of stuff that I haven't actually run and see if it, I mean, first off, it doesn't even compile. Preview features, what am I? Oh, descriptor. I, I created a descriptor object and then I forgot to change it. So now it's, you know, not giving me any comp compilation errors or, you know, interpretation errors we're not using in this initial parameter initial unfilled I don't know what that means that's weird okay uh, name move can be undefined so but why how is it possible this is in the game move is here so oh so if, if black makes a move and white never Oh shoot! I didn't. I broke something. So so this is if if it's, if it's Black's turn, then we still have to make a move. I, I actually forgot to make to have the Black engine make a move. Okay, I think this should work. Um, I mean, you know, work is a big. This might run. Now the question is, okay, okay. Here's the question: If this runs and it works, what what will we see? So what I'm doing right now is I'm initializing. Let's just initialize the weights. So we initialize black to have the, the standard material values, and then we have white as all ones. Um, and yeah, well, I guess I guess if this works, we should see that it slowly starts to win more, and that these numbers might start to make more sense. Um, but we'll see. I don't know. I doubt it's going to even run. It usually, when you do this, you have some kind of bug. All right, index out of range. So I have a indexing error. I don't think I actually saved white moves. <laughs> okay, so white moves dot append move. I'm not sure how I even got down to there. Okay, so. Uh, I got a none type. Right. Yeah, what's happening is I have it set to play a maximum game of maximum length 100. So it's not checking for threefold repetition. If it runs, if we play more than 100 moves, I just call it a draw. Um, and when that happens, the outcome will be null. There will be none. Okay, we have a division by zero. That's in the diagnostics. So what is this? This is uh, wins, losses, and draws. Oh, I'm not keeping track of the wins, losses, and draws. Oh, right, because I got rid of that code. All right, so this is going to say, we're going to say wins equal plus equals one. I'm going to say here, if there's a loss, losses plus equals one, draws plus equals one. All right, it's playing. Wait, how did that so quickly? So it started out like this. This was after playing one game. Surprising. So is this going? Is this trending in the right direction? It's the win rate is 0.21. Win loss ratio is okay, 1.5. I don't think it's. I don't think it's learning. I think it's just randomly doing stuff. So there's probably still bugs, or I just don't know. I know there's a lot of traps. For logical errors in the um, 
my reasoning about the which turn it is and the reward value you give for whose turn it is. But at the same time, well, no, a win rate at some point was 0.24, and then it dropped down. So yeah, this is no, I, I'm, I'm looking for patterns where there are none. I think it's just randomly moving. It could be too, it looks like, I mean, the fact that these are moving so fast, these are changing quite a lot between games, probably means the learning rate is too high. Win loss ratio just went to two. That seems like it might actually. This is it's all, you should always be suspicious when you write when you run something for the first time and it seems to be working. Like something must be wrong. Um, but yeah, win loss ratio now is two point five. Is this really? What about these numbers? Do these numbers make any sense? So it's valuing pawns a lot. And knights negative. Okay, that's weird. Yeah, that that can't be right. Well, it could be. I mean, the queen is high. That's something we didn't have before. Right, it's valuing the queen, and that win-loss ratio is going up quite a lot. Win rate remains kind of a low. So it's played a few, a couple hundred games. I'm gonna cancel it, and I think. What I the the script as I had written it um, was loading from disk, so, uh, so it was saving to disk and loading from disk. So every single time I can, I can, um, if I just comment out this initialization, it should resume from where it was. So let's let me let me see if that works correctly. So last time we saw this, it was around eight three two. Queen was fourteen. Yeah, so it loaded it from disk, which is good. I want to lower the learning rate and have it resume. Yeah, those numbers are still jumping around a lot, right? And 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 you you have to remember like it's making, you know, the number of move it's it's making an, a step for every move, and that step can have different sizes as well. I mean the gradient right the or the loss can be different, but still this is a uh, this is potentially good. So, he, so here's the situation. If this is working, I mean, you know, I, I'm a little skeptical that it's working, but if it's working, then the next step would be to give it more features to consider, right? All it's considering right now is how many, you know, how many pawns am I up? How many knights am I up? How many rooks am I up? How many bishops? How many queens? And and did I checkmate? Um, yeah, the win-loss ratio is really high now. But the but the weights are just jumping around like crazy. So that's just, and then now bishops are worth negative. So that that can't be. Well, actually, I mean, I don't actually don't know what the best weights are for this for this agent that's randomly choosing based on the scores. Right, it's randomly choosing moves. It is valuing the valuing the queen a lot, which is what we want. I guess one thing we can look at. The nice thing about the, the Q score is we can actually look at it in, in a particular game. Um, but I don't want to do that right now. Let's see. Well, let's just quickly add some features. I think if I were to... So I think one thing is... Um, now the win-loss ratio went back down. Let's think about what other features we can give this without doing something too complicated. I mean, for, for one thing, the simplest thing is just to give all the board positions, sorry, all the positions of the pieces. It would certainly make it more expensive, but it wouldn't be that big, big right? So now, how do I even do that?
Yeah, and and, and, then, and the last stream I played against this bot, but it, it's just like not a smart bot because it's just making random moves, um, random moves that don't don't lose material. Although this, because it's a reinforcement learning bot, it does it, it will sort of consider future. Well, it has it's really limited in what it can actually consider. Like it's learning to avoid future losses in material, but it's not gonna. It's not going to actually be able to look ahead or anything like that. Yeah, so I think that the next step would be to add the positions. So we would represent the all you know all the. I guess we would represent the board as maybe just like a. Again, what are these? How many pieces are there? There's, there's pawns, knights, bishops, rooks, queens, and king. So it could be like a, a seven, seven matrices. It's kind of big, but not that big. Oh shoot, no, we need 14 because, wait, did I count that right? Pawns, knights, bishops, rooks, queens, kings, six. Why did I say seven? Okay, so it's, 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 so it's 12, right? Because you need the white and the black pieces. Is that the best representation of this board? Because the pieces can't overlap. So is there some way you can simplify the representation? I was just thinking, because like the bishops don't actually need a six by six, I'm sorry, eight by eight board. But if you want to represent both bishops, then you, you need an eight by eight. The pawns can never be on the first rank but it would just be at least so much like hacking to like cut out the, the position, the pieces that you can't get to, or the positions you can't get to. Yeah, the nut, yeah. So probably the best way to do is just to have a bunch of binary, binary matrices for each piece type. Let me do that. Let's do that. Why not? And I'll just append it to the features. So let's just add, add piece positions. One second, I'm gonna try to shut this shade without the sun in my eye. Okay, so Let's add the piece positions. So I think we just need this piece map. I don't know how, what this actually looks like, what the piece map is. So I think we can get, oh, you know what? Maybe it's um, piece color, piece type, piece color. So we get piece in all pieces. I think we actually, you know what? I think we can just do it this way. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna generate pawns I had previously previously talked about wanting the score to be the negation, depending on what color is playing. But is that really important? Maybe not for Q learning. I guess it doesn't matter. Because I could do, I could put like a negative. I could, I can, I can represent. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna do it that way. So, so eight by eight. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make one of these for each of the type types of pieces. Hmm. Should I? Wait, we already have the index. Let's just do it. Let's just do a, a eight by eight by five, five by six. So it's not pieces. So piece grid. Okay, so here we will we will uh, 
this good. Yeah, we seem we seem to be hitting a peak, like a maximum year. I don't think we can do, do better than that. Um, I think we had we had four at some point. Look at this. Still queens are oh no, still likes pawns. Uh, eh, it's it, I mean these numbers are jumping around so fast. It's just not very stable. I have to lower that rate even more. Actually, I'm gonna, while while I run the, while I fix this code. Oh shoot, I can't. I won't. I won't be able to run it now that I'm in the middle of writing this. All right, let's just fix this and then I'll lower the learning rate because it's just moving too fast. I'll lower it now. Okay, am I using learning rate correctly? Let me see if the learning algorithm is actually using the learning rate. He has learning rate. Yeah, so it's gonna it should be scaling it by that. Am I am I not passing in that learning rate? <laughs> yeah, I'm not passing in the learning rate, that's why. Okay, well let's that means that this is not correct. I was not actually using it. Um QLearn. QLearn. Let's do Let's just change the default. It's, it's a little ugly, but it was going, it was moving too fast. Let's shrink it down, and I will now get back to where I was. Okay, so I, I want to change the features. I'm gonna I'll I'll uh, try to index into this piece grid. We're gonna give it. Uh, we're gonna look at look for. Okay, so we need to get the piece position. I'm actually going to debug this so I can actually so I can figure out what the right commands are. So here we can run some commands in PyCharm. So we have a piece object. Is that correct? Yeah, so we, oh shoot. Yeah, that's annoying. Because I don't have, because I took the values out of this. And I need the, I need the key. So I'm just, I'm gonna do this. This is a little hacky, but so we're gonna do piece. We're gonna do position, maybe. All pieces. Is this gonna work? Let's try debugging it. Okay. So do we have a position object? Position is sixty-three. Okay. I think they've vectorized the. Um, grid position well there's one way to know this uh, so what type of piece is this this is a uh, piece 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 is this is R so it's probably a rook and it's at 63 that sounds like like it's in the corner which is correct so actually what I can do is just directly use that. I don't. I don't actually know what that is, but let's forget about this. Let's just say sixty-four by six, and then we're going to put it in there. So piece grid, and the index will be position, and the Sorry, the index will be a position, position and the piece index. So index piece, this is ugly. Um, let's say type index. And we'll just copy this term, type index, and we'll make a type index. Okay. And I think we just add value. So we're going to get this grid object. This grid object will contain all the different types of pieces and their locations. And then I'm just going to vectorize it. So I'm going to say, okay, so features is return. Now, okay, now we need to do a little bit more debugging. I guess maybe here. 
So once it runs through, we'll have a piece grid object which we can look at. And I can look at it in, um, in here. This is what it looks like. So there's you know six columns, 64 rows, and you get pluses and minuses. They're all plus one, minus one. Wait, what is it, blue? Oh, blue's minus one, okay. Okay, uh, yeah, this is good. So now I want to run the command. So features is an ND array. So I want to concatenate the two. So I guess I will do like, uh, hmm. Can I do this? Does that work? Nope. Only integer arrays can be, okay, concatenate doesn't do what I wanted to do. I, I think it's like, let's see if this does what I want. Close this thing. Uh, doo -doo -doo. You give us a, okay, you give it a list of arrays, I see. And it joins a sequence of arrays al along an existing axis. So I think what I want to run is... Ah, what? Why did it do that? What? <sighs> Weird. So I, I had to put this in as a... As a... As a tuple. And that gives us a thing that's length 300, 391. I think that's correct. So that looks good. Let's copy that. So I think this ravel command is to turn the, um, the, the tensor into just a vector, which I guess I will just, I'm just gonna return it. So the good thing is we'll still be able to print the first few entries. Um, the difference is that we're now also going to ha have some other weights, which will make the weights that we read we see hard to interpret, but shouldn't change anything. So let's see if this runs. Does this run now? No, it's going to crash because the, the weights are the wrong size. So I have to initialize a new set of weights. And to do that, I can just pass in here, engine, I'll just say weights equals none. Is that correct? The way I set it up so that if weights is none, oh, I also want this. If, if both of these are none, then it will create, it will initialize a new set of weights. Where, where did I just lose that? I just lost that. Uh, weights equals none. Weights file, weight file equals none. Okay, it's not happy. Why is it not happy? So where to get the weights from? Oh, the black engine's also, oh, I see, okay. So the black engine using, is using the same thing. So I, I have to actually make this all zeros for the rest of it. So Let's do this. All right, so that might work. No, black is also unhappy. So, oh, you know what? Okay, so I want to set this to be also initialized randomly. Oh, we're getting close. So I just need to give it, to, uh, it's gonna be seven. Okay, a lot of losses, which is weird. Uh, the weights are... Hasn't won a game yet? Let's initialize the same weights here. Let's just make it so that it's a tie. So we should get like sort of even play. Uh, 
yeah, it's kind of even right now. It would be really cool to visualize now these these grids because you can now these grids can be like plotted on the screen. Now, I, I don't want to. Uh, I don't have time to do that right now, but maybe I can do that next time. Um, but the question is, will we see any improvement now? Okay, maybe I set the learning rate too small now, because maybe that's why. Because I think it was 0.1 before, and then I, made, I reduced it by 100. So let's just let's just increase the learning rate again. I'm I'm going to turn off this initialization so that it can so I can resume it from the previous one. So the black weights will always be hard coded to this. White weights will load from the disk which we can just look at what those weights are. Um, I wonder if there's a way to format this so it's more human readable. Like horizontally printing a list is not the most human re readable thing, but to make it vertically printed, it wouldn't be. These numbers are really kind of big. Wait, this doesn't look right. Is this really 300 numbers? Oh yeah, I guess it is. I was scrolling really fast. Yeah, I'm a little surprised. Okay, first off, why are the numbers all big and why are they? Why are none of them negative? Am I... Okay, why are none of them negative? I guess they might. It might naturally not be negative because if you think about what they're me they're measuring, the features are all like plus one if it's your piece and minus one if it's the opponent's piece. So, I guess you always want to have more. Um, but we're not really learning anything useful. It doesn't look like. just hit about even there was some initial fluctuation like early on this is this is also a great opportunity for plotting things like maybe we're maybe we're learning something we just hit even win rate was 18.18 18, 0.15 point uh, it fluctuated at the beginning right the win rate, win rate was kind of high initially and then yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's actually learning. We need some better diagnostics. I'm just printing it how these raw uh, these summary statistics that are too too basic. Like if we could look at the if we look at the boards, like as humans, we kind of know that center control is good, so we would know that like having knights in the center is good. If it learns that, then that's a great sign. Um, I also kind of want to be impatient. I'm looking. I'm looking at these numbers, and they're growing quite slowly, or not growing. They're changing quite slowly. Because remember, in, I initialized them to like the standard um, position. Uh, uh, sorry, material values. So, you know, knights and bishops are still around three. Rooks are around five. Queens around nine. So they haven't moved much at all. This has gone up. That's that's uh, that's good. I don't know. I think I think the learning rate's too slow. I'm gonna, gonna just gonna hack it around and just, this is just like this is just uh, we're we're living in in hack town. But let's see. Let's see if we get any improvement. 
And I was like, now the pot, wait, the, what, the values is completely changed. What did I do? Did I break something? Did I reinitialize it? Oh, I think I reinitialized it. Okay, I'm all right with that. Uh, am I all right with that? I don't think I actually am. No, I think it's bad. All right, so let's, I had meant to reload from disk, so, so this is where I'm being a little, little um, what's the word? I guess, I guess I'm, okay, this way it will reload from disk, and then I'm reinitializing it to that. And all right, you know what? Let's comment that out. So what it's doing is it's let's just continue from where we are. So we're not we're not we're losing a lot because our current weights are not good, but that doesn't mean that we're not having some material gains during the game. And if anything, we're seeing like material losses, and material losses would give us some, um, give us feedback that we can use. So look at us lose every single game. Um, but will it? I mean, will we uh, possibly learn to improve from here? I'm just watching these. So the one, one thing that's tricky is that we, we, when we see a number like this, that's not the only thing that's valuing the queens. The, the, the board, the, the piece grid, the piece grid weights are also valuing the queens. So we actually don't know um, whether like the model, I mean, it won a game. Great. Let's see if we can win more. What, what, what I was saying is that the, the, the pieces might, there's a score for king? How's that possible? Won a second game. By the way, in the other the other stream, uh, a few days ago when I did the stream, I was playing against this bot, and I accidentally did rated games. So I'm gonna, I actually like increased my player rating by cheating by accident. So I'm actually gonna, while we do this, let's see what. Um, if I turn on the engine, I'm gonna run it in a separate window. Just turn on my. If I just run the, the engine, I'm gonna play myself in forfeit. Um, Sorry, not play myself. Play the bird bot and forfeit, so I lose some of those rating points back. Um, so, just you know, since this is like being streamed and recorded, I can show you what happened. Uh, this is my personal account. I played my bot in the classical games that were, that were rated by accident, and this jump happened. So I was like, originally I was sixteen fifty something. So let's try to get down to sixteen fifty by. I mean, I don't know what the what what's the right thing. Like this is wrong also, like what I'm doing now. It's but it's a two do two rights, do two wrongs make a right? I, I don't know. Um but let, let me let me um but I think I think I think ethically is probably better for me to bring my rating down to where I was. Not just ethically. I don't wanna I don't wanna have to be overrated right now. So let me play Birdbot. So we'll, we'll leave it on rated and in classical time control. I'm gonna I'm gonna forfeit. Don't let me win. Make sure I don't win this game. So it's like a but first while we do that we can actually experiment with it. So we can make a move and see what it does. Why didn't it move right away? Oh okay. So it looks pretty random. I don't think you can. I mean, you know, we just dropped a pawn. I think it's random. I think I don't think it's winning anything yet. So let's see. Here, win loss rate is still the same. Yeah, this is this is not this is not a good bot right now. It's really quite far from being good. Um, it's not clear if these wins are just totally random. I mean, it should be a, playing against this this other engine. It should be a win. With because it's basically making random moves, so 
I just I don't know if this will ever get better there's a couple signs we can look for like Queen is higher than it has a higher score than the other pieces which is maybe it's going the right direction the learning rate is 0.1 I don't know why it's not jumping around as much as it used to maybe just because there's oh maybe because we're, we're just looking at a small portion of the weights but all right let me forfeit this game and get some uh okay 22 I guess I can stop let's look at my my ratings uh so for classical I was at 1658 before I accidentally cheated and now I'm where's where is my current rating 1659 I think that's fine I think I think I've satisfied fairness all right so now I can play sort of uh I can play un unrated games against bird bot and that's fine yeah I don't I don't want to play my own bot in rated games I'm happy to have the bot play other players and other and other um, bots in rated games but it's a little weird now because I completely changed the code for the bot so like the fact that it had a rating before is a little bit mis misleading um right the, the rating before was for it's the, for the minimax search algorithm all right let's do uh casual and you know time doesn't matter but I'll just do 30 minutes okay so so what are we seeing here so still no not very many wins uh it's so it's, it's just like slowly crawling toward what I think might be reasonable I mean you know these these numbers are reasonable it's ish sorry I shouldn't say they're reasonable they're they're in the right direction right moving ma making the queen worth more than the other pieces right now the bishop and rook are worth about the same which you could argue that you know for playing against a random player maybe that's maybe that's okay so this, again this is how a lot of my streams wrap up near the end which you know and i say that because i had to wrap up soon um it's it's like it might be working but we're not sure and i don't know what the best way is all right you know what i'm gonna do what i did before i initialized the i'll just put this initialization back in so i'm gonna initialize the bot in fact the black player i don't i want the rest of it so how do we do this i want seven like that goes zero i'm just going to zero out all the weights except for except for this this initial thing this the the, the standard material values and we're going to see if white can improve on the black on the black right so, so starting from the same position or same weights white and black at game one will be identical engines and then we're going to see if they become better or if white becomes better right and white has the ability to consider the positions of the pieces not just the the values or not the value not, not just not just the counts so let's see i mean this looks it looks like we're winning a lot a lot of draws we get zero for draws we get a hundred for wins so it should get it should really want to get get wins so here's what's missing right? knowing the positions of the pieces this is a linear model so we're just putting a weight on every single position so all it's doing is trying to like put the pieces in the best places um, it doesn't consider the the sort of pairwise relationships between pieces it doesn't consider three-way relationships um, that's where we have to get some nonlinear models um, we might be able to fake it with something like a polynomial expansion that could be really expensive so probably the next step is just, just is just to build a neural network on this same input so rather than having just a linear weight on everything we just put like multiple linear weights and then put it through a nonlinear activation function that's one way to do it um i'm i'm brainstorm i'll brainstorm offline about other ways to do it because i don't want to necessarily just lean on the crutch of building a giant neural network um because there might be other ways i mean maybe you could do some kind of something kind of like nearest neighbor learning but that wouldn't really i don't know how you would do that with q learning but i'll think about it 
So what are we seeing here? Is it uh, improving from the previous, like some earlier scores? So earlier win loss ratio was like three. Okay, that was that was early enough that it's low, small sample size. So it was four. That's small sample size. I don't think it's, it's kind of like hovering around that. Then it goes to two, uh, and then it's uh, then it's uh, it's still around two. So I don't know. Is it actually better? I'm not sure. I mean, it's better, right? It's it's winning more often than it loses, but is it improving? Maybe. I mean, the question is, these early numbers that were above two, that were higher, like these win-loss ratios that were higher, were they just small sample sizes? And we're looking at like 100 games, a little over 100 games. Could just be small sample sizes, and then once it settles, then then we're actually showing this, this more steady improvement. Could be. Oh, I'm playing it right now. Okay, so let's make a move. I'm thinking this is so the way this game, the way this works. Oh, you know what? I can just re reboot my bot, and then it will have the latest weights. So the way the leech has spot uh, code works is that whenever a new game is is whenever the bot is challenged, it spawns a new a new um, object. A new engine object, and that and the way my code works is that the new engine object will load from, load the weights from disk. So whenever the game starts, it'll it'll sort of use the weights from that time. But we started this game earlier, so I I, I wanted to get the newest weights. Uh, I don't know how to play this. This doesn't seem like a good. I mean, I'm sure every opening is good, but this, I mean, it blocks in the bishop, so I don't know. It's certainly not a posi uh, opening I know how to how to play, but. Um, I don't know. That doesn't. <laughs> I was gonna say that doesn't look like a legitimate move, but that is also the sort of like stereotypical alpha zero move. Um, is is did I create alpha zero yet? Mm, whoa, three point five six. I mean, it's still drawing all the time against a random player. So, uh, yeah, no, it's not alpha zero, but it's uh, but it, somehow that's funny. Okay, uh, let's try to get developed. Well, I'm, I'm curious. I want to reboot it so that it's, again, using the latest weights. I could have it load the latest weights between every move. I could always do that as well, but uh, for now, let's just leave it this way. Mm, okay. Well, I'm not paying attention. I got I shouldn't play it in bullet speed. Uh, all right, so if I check, that will be a little bit annoying, and it's a good developing move. So, well... That he can block with a pawn, but he's not gonna. Okay. Uh, I don't want to make that trade. This looks like a. That looks like a mistake. <laughs> um, that's interesting. All right, we we have we, this this bot should have a, a table for where the king should be, and I don't think I would. I mean, unless oh no, again because it's playing a random player, maybe. It, moving the king kind of manually or manually castling is actually good we could also spend some time interpreting these but again that, that's not these, this doesn't capture all of the information about the queens because the queens are also represented in the peace grid so um, all right so let's let's just continue this game right, let me let me uh, reload some new weights also give it a chance to use the better weights that it has now so there's another way that we can also improve on this. Like I could also add, um, you know, I could combine the search, uh, minimax search with this. Um, so if, if it's, it's essentially learning a good, a good heuristic, hopefully good anyway, it's trying to learn a good heuristic. And um, you can use that heuristic in minimax search. Okay. Um, how do I... See, I wanted I wanted 
I wanted the bot to take my piece so I can get my knight there, but that's not that great a square because then they can get kicked out here. So, okay, let's do, I don't even know how to make progress here. I want to get rid of this thing, but I, that's not so easy. I'll just develop, develop the queen. Um, that's not good. Okay, drop the rook. Okay, it's falling apart now. That's okay. That's to be expected. Okay. So, it's a free pawn. Is that the best move I have? Probably. Okay, let's check this status here. It's 4.5, so I think it's actually learning. This this is cool. Um, all right, it's winning more. It's still not. It's still drawing all the time. Like it's basically, you know, you can just bet on it drawing, but it's winning more often. It's it's improving its win rate, um, which means that I could, you know, th this framework is is set up. I could just like come up with other features and just let it run. Um, I could let this run overnight. See if it gets to it. I mean, it's going to be pretty limited, right? It, it can't, there's no notion of any tactical knowledge because it doesn't, it's just considering like independently where each piece is placed. So it's just trying to put the pieces in good places. Um, will that beat anybody? Probably not. I don't think it will even beat like a pure beginner because like it just doesn't consider if a piece is hanging, right? If it doesn't know, it, it, it knows if a piece is in a good square. But it doesn't know if it's defended. I, I don't. I just don't think it will be able to win against even a beginner. Um, but that said, I mean, look at this wins losses. That's that's big. Um, so yeah, that's cool. Uh, I guess I could finish this game. I don't know. Is, it, is that interesting? It's not really that interesting. I'll just yeah. It's not that interesting. I got. I got to get going then. All right. Cool. So. To summarize this, this in this session, I think I got TD or Q learning working, um, and I, I enhanced the uh, feature representation to include a grid of where all the pieces are placed, and that's given the the, the ability to have a pretty strong uh, win loss ratio. Um, but there's there's more room. We can we can uh, definitely give it something that allows it to consider the relationship between the pieces, um, but that'll take some thinking on how to represent that. Um, we might need to move to neural networks, but I, I, I would like to avoid that first. I'd like to have because like one of the nice things is right now these tables we can just visualize them. So maybe we could do something like a, I don't know. Something like a. Hmm. No, it will just blow up. I'll have to think about it. There might be ways to enhance this without without losing complete interpretability. Um, but right now we can like visualize all these tables, which is cool. So maybe that would be what I do next to, to look at the tables that it's learning. That's interesting. And then you just combine it with Minimax and it might be a super good engine. But yeah, lot, lots of things to explore. All right. Uh, hope this was informative for you and uh, stay tuned for the next session. Bye.